guys, it's Laura and you are watching Laura X Annie and welcome to the first festive video of the season! Yes! It is Christmas time, it is December. By the time you see this, this will be December 4th, I believe, that you're watching this on. So, um, yes, I have the tinsel, I have the Christmas tree and also I have my Vlogmas Day 1 uploading. It has now. 55 minutes to go. So let's hope it uploads properly. Anyway, I'm here with the festive book tag. Um, I got it off of Bryony Marshall, her blog, um, but it actually comes from Girl Reading, aka Katie, here on YouTube. So it's her original tag, so I will link them down below. And if you want to do this tag, please do it. Please send me a link when you do it. I'd love to see it. But it consists of eight questions that are all Christmassy and about books. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first question is, a fictional family you would love to spend Christmas dinner with? And my answer to that is the Malfoys. And you can fight me on it. I would love to spend Christmas with the Malfoys because I feel like it'd be a lovely, quiet Christmas dinner. And I prefer a quiet Christmas dinner because all I've ever known in my life is a quiet Christmas dinner. Usually for Christmas dinner, it was just me, my mum, my dad, and my gran. Now my gran's passed, it's just me, my mum, my dad. We have had people come over. I think we had like my Auntie Carol come over once and my Uncle Walter. But to be honest with you, Christmas dinner was just usually the four of us. Yeah, the four of us. Now it's just the three of us. <laughs> um, so I enjoy. I'm not used to something like the Weasley's Christmas dinner, which is so rowdy. Um, so yeah, that's why I would choose the Malfoys and the reason that I'm holding up the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets uh, by J.K. Rowling is because this is when you kind of are introduced to Lucius Malfoy. Um, so, and also this is a Slytherin edition, a lovely Christmas gift. Um, the Philosopher's Stone and um, Chamber of Secrets are out in house editions in paperback and hardback. Um, you can get them from any good bookstores. I got this from Amazon, my first one. Um, was from Waterstones, so you can get them basically from anywhere. Um, but yeah, it, you get them in Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff and Slytherin. So a good Christmas gift for somebody as well, as well as a question. Number two is a bookish item you would love to receive as a gift. My answer to that is bookmarks, but bookmarks like this, not the ones that are like long, rectangle, they slip in, the ones that clip onto the top of your page. I know you can get like Hogwarts ones and like house ones and stuff but I would just love them because I just think they would be a lot more practical than anything else so that's why I like them. You know if anyone's watching this and wants to get me one I'd be uh, more than happy. Number three is a fictional character you think would make a perfect Christmas elf. Now I could just go easy and say Dobby. I'm not going to. I'm going to say Theodore Finch from All the Right Places by Jennifer Niven. Yes, 100% is it Theodore Finch. He is, although he's a depressed little sad bean, I think that he is, if you've read All the Right Places, you'll know that he helps Violet try and live her life. And um, I think that's something that a Christmas elf would do, just wants to make everyone happy and I think he makes Violet happy and I think he would really make everybody else's like Christmas really happy and I just, he loves his family and you know he, he just wants to do the best um, so yeah that's why I think he would make the perfect Christmas elf. Number four, match a book to its perfect Christmas song. Well, didn't say anything that you can pick plays. It's a book. So this is Hamlet by William Shakespeare. It's a play. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, so I have chosen Hamlet by William Shakespeare and the song I picked was Last Christmas by Wham because Last Christmas I gave you my heart but the very next day you gave it away. This year to save me from tears I'll give it to someone special. Dun, 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 and then you know the rest of the song but anyway um ex excuse my terrible singing but yes last christmas i'll tell you why because i feel like ophelia to hamlet that's like if this was set in modern day and around christmas she would be singing off her nut like going last christmas after downing a bottle of wine i just can see her do that if you've ever seen the crown and you've seen princess margaret get drunk in her underwear and dance about 
then that's how I imagine Ophelia at Christmas time with Last Christmas playing. It's a tragic story. She dies, but you know, YOLO. Number five. Bah Humbug, a book or a fictional character you've been disappointed in and should be put on the naughty list. Huh, that is easy. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Now, you're going on the naughty list and I will tell you why. I will literally tell you why. Because I started reading this book this year, right? And I was hesitant to read it, but I thought, you know what? I'm good just now. I can read this. It was not a good idea. Um, because I get invested in characters and books and that's why I, I, I don't read a lot of books anymore because I'm so scared I'm going to get attached to a character and I got attached to Theodore and if you've read this book you will know what happens at the end. I was 323 pages in and I did the thing I do when I'm invested in a book or a series and I skip to the bloody end and um, I uh, put it down and that was about three months ago and you know I've not picked it back up because I uh, don't want to pick it back up because I don't want to read the end. It doesn't finish. It finishes on page 323 for me. It's not finishing any longer because, um, yes, yeah, so this is why that's on the na naughty list. How dare you do that to me, make me have feelings. I literally bawled my eyes out on the bloody train over this bloke book. <clears throat> Number six, a book or a fictional character you think deserves more love and appreciation and deserves to be on the nice list. You can fight me on this. It's Draco Malfoy, you can fight me. I think Draco Malfoy is a wonderful character and deserves much more love and uh, appreciation, but not just that, redemption. He deserves redemption. He has re redeeming factors. He just, he can, look, Draco did a lot of shitty things. I'll say that. I'm not making any excuses for him, but all I'm gonna say is that um, he never did those things off his own back. He did them to save his family. Therefore, he has some redeeming qualities. He does have a heart, unlike his father and unlike Voldemort and unlike Umbridge. So yes, of course. And the reason I've picked um, this book is because Draco's in the back of the cover and also this is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and this is when you see him start to lose it. And I think um, he has redeeming factors. And also, Harry wouldn't have acquitted him at the trials um, and spoke up for him so he could get acquitted if he didn't think he had redeeming factors. So... Hat Draco Malfoy and you can fight me. Number seven, red, gold and green. A uh, book cover that you think has a wonderfully Christmassy feel to it. Well, I don't have one of those, so we're gonna go with this. This is uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And on the front it says, the only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. And on the back it says, I am jealous of everything whose beauty does not die. I am jealous of the portrait you've painted of me. Why did you paint it? This book just screams a Christmas present. This is one of the Penguin's classics. And a lot of the classics have these kind of lovely covers now. So it's pink and blue and it's just beautiful. I also have a little mini version of it. Um, but yeah, this just makes me think of like Christmas wrapping paper and like also wallpaper. But I do, do love this book. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to start reading this this month. But yeah, no, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful book. So definitely a beautiful Christmas present for somebody. So I think that's why it's got a very Christmassy feel. Number eight, a book or series you love so much you want everyone to find another Christmas tree this year so they can read it and love it too. Okay, so I have two for you and neither of them are Harry Potter. <laughs> Shocker, -y. So the first series I am going with is I'll tell you this, you'll understand why I've picked these books first. Um, so yeah, this is the Girl Online trilogy by Zoe Sugg. Uh, Girl Online, Girl Online on tour and Girl Online going solo. So um, these came out by Zoe, she wrote them. Uh, they follow um, a girl called uh, Penny. Yes, I was right. Penny and Noah. And um, yeah, it's just amazing books. They're great for um, fiction. I do love them. Um, it totally talks about the digital age and social media. And if you've ever wanted, if you're ever like me, and if you've watched Vlogmas Day 1, and you know I'm a 
I fell in love with Nick Jonas back in 2008 who is a very famous uh, singer and actor and he's now married um, but I fell in love with him and this is just like falling in love with a famous person and I just love the idea of this so if you um, have younger siblings that you think would love this this would be great to go under your tree and anyway moving on to the series I actually wanted to talk about but you have to be like 16 and above to read this and no it's not Fifty Shades it is the Crossfire series by Sylvia D. Um, in twi uh, bared to you, entwined with you, reflects in you, captivated by you, and one with you. Um, so this is the Crossfire series. Um, I have a big, big love for this series. I discovered it in 2012. I was introduced to it by a girl in my sixth year, and she said, "Oh, if you like Fifty Shades, you should read um, the Crossfire series." Because at that time. Um, I had been on holiday and I had bought Fifty Shades to read on holiday because everyone was doing it back then and I really enjoyed it to the point where I was like intrigued about sex and it intru introduced me in a really bad way to it but when this came out um, I couldn't help but be really interested in it and it's a lot better than the Fifty Shades. It's like the Fifty Shades was like a young fiction novel and this is like the adult version of it. Um, this follows Gideon and Eva, Gideon Cross and Eva Tremell, and um, they both have issues. So it does, this series does include uh, mentions of rape and sexual abuse, um, but it's not between Gideon and Eva. It's between their respective partners, well, people beforehand. So Eva, um, it happened with her uh, stepbrother and with Gideon it happened when he was a young and it was with his like psychiatrist slash therapist assistant. Um, so they both come in with problems surrounding sex and how like their life and then you just see it how they deal with it and there's a lot of therapy in it. There's a lot of like sex in it uh, between them but they, they work through it and I think that they make mistakes through it but it's very very realistic and it's very interesting to read and there is a plot funny enough compared to Fifty Shades that goes through the whole five books wouldn't you believe. <laughs> I just did not mean this video to be a shade but yeah it's not as problematic and I, I Trust me, it's worth the read. If you're not triggered by, obviously, uh, mentions of rape, sexual abuse, flashbacks, child abuse, basically that sort of stuff, um, it would be a good series to read. Um, so yeah, but obviously 16 over, but obviously Girl in Line, the trilogy for that is really good as well. So yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're gonna do it, please send me your um, videos. I'd love to see them and yeah, I'll, See you guys on Friday with my top 10 Christmas songs. I literally have my Christmas jumper next to me because I'm just about to film it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on Friday. Bye.